Uh, the talk is about Cloud Security Suite. Uh, it's a one-stop tool for AWS, GCP, and Azure Security Audit. Uh, before we get started with it, uh, has any one of you have tried auditing your cloud infrastructure? Right? Or, or is there anyone who believes because you're on cloud so you're secure? No? <laughs> All right. So we're at the right place. So, <laughs> so the, uh, we're going to look at uh, how we can audit the infrastructure and, uh, along the talk. And it's a demo-based talk. I like giving demos. So let's go with it. A uh, little about me, I'm a lead security engineer with the firm I work for. I've spoken in a couple of conferences. Uh, I've been a trainer. I've contributed to open sources before. Uh, I'm a Null Bangalore chapter lead. Null is an open community in security uh, in India. Uh, I'm an organizer of Cloud Village at DEF CON. This, uh, it's, it's happening this year. If you have CFP workshop, anything you can submit, it's open. And search it hard. Uh, Let's start with AWS. Let's uh, look at some uh, information about AWS. It was launched in March 2006. It's a stable leader in the cloud space. Since cloud uh, infrastructures have been coming up, AWS has always been on top of the Gartner quadrant. Uh, it has exceeded uh, the number of active users are more than a million. Uh, Netflix uh, has been known to adapt AWS uh, very swiftly in a very efficient manner. I've I've heard that even uh, Amazon and Netflix work together to that how they can use their infrastructure in a better way. Uh, uh, other than Netflix, uh, there are a couple of other firms who have, uh, who have uh, accepted AWS as a whole, and uh, AWS has been maintaining their infrastructure. Uh, and uh, there might be a reason when these, uh, yeah, these firms are using it, because cloud is uh, elastic, it's fast, it's smart. A little about GCP. Uh, launched in October 2011, most of the people I know who use GCP is because it's very cost effective. Uh, they do struggle with documentation a little bit, but then, yeah, they're, they're getting there. Azure. Azure has been around uh, since October 2008, but uh, it started as a project Red Dog at, at that time. After, in 2010, they, they, they adopted the name Microsoft Azure. It is one of those... Uh, Cloud providers, uh, uh, you can see, if you look at past five years, you can see them grow and reaching very close to AWS. AWS is still leading it, but yeah, Azure is giving a tough fight to them. A little, uh, like a Gartner Quadrant, uh, AWS, you can see it's way up there. Microsoft, two, three years back, it was where the Google is, uh, but it has, uh, uh, you picked up space, uh, pace. Now, uh, why is everyone going towards cloud? Yes, it's a fancy name, but everyone is moving towards cloud. Why are they doing it? Because uh, the startup culture is at, like, is at its boom. Uh, there are a lot of smart companies coming in, the smart enterprises, smart IT departments. It saves time. You don't, need, uh, the, you don't need to do a lot of things in order to bring machines up, bring services up. Uh, it saves money. Uh, in, in, in terms of human resources as well, you don't have now have need to have like a big team for uh, your ops operation. It has remarkable features and they keep increasing every day, every now and then. They find a service they can make it, they, they, they end up making it. And they, do, and they do a good job doing it as well. Makes the job easier and enterprises are more profitable, more elastic. Before we go about uh, auditing the cloud infrastructure, let's not uh, say that cloud doesn't give you anything, like the infrastructure doesn't give you any security. They do give you security. They give you DOS prevention, your DDoS prevention. They do MITM prevention, IP spoofing, unauthorized port scanning is uh, uh, stopped, packet sniffing. Configuration management is also a good feature. Uh, like, and why you need to audit your infrastructure is basically Configuration management is the main culprit there because at the end, security guys are not bringing your machines up. These are ops people. Yes, you can work with them to harden your policies, your IAM policies and other things, but every now and then they are prone to human errors and that's when uh, your infrastructure is exposed uh, in a vulnerable fashion. But uh, after, uh, there are other things which uh, the, uh, the cloud provider security cannot take care of. Uh, let's say you have a vulnerable service running. Uh, the cloud providers don't care about it. You have misconfigured access of IAM policies or root accounts being used, your service accounts in terms of GCP. Multi-factor authentication is not enabled. That's something you're looking at infrastructure and why don't you have multi-factor authentication as a, as a prominent feature? It should be mandatory. 
Uh, SL search, I come from a pen testing background, so these things become important for me, like a vulnerable service or SL cert, uh, using vulnerable cipher. Your ports are exposed to public. Uh, I've seen it a number of times. Uh, people use SSH to get into your infrastructure, but then SSH ports are open all the time to the entire public internet. You should restrict it to office IPs, at least. Your buckets are world readable. Uh, most of the hacks you see around AWS or the data leakage are around these buckets. Buckets are basically storage, uh, like a, a storage service. Yeah, AWS provides in Azure its blobs, like they just have different names, but the functionality is similar. The password policies are not configured. Basic checks are just not there. Your root credentials are being used, and many more. As many services, as many, peop uh, as many configuration you can uh, do, as many places things can go wrong. I love this old saying, uh, uh, with, when you're dealing with such a big infrastructure, which generally companies are bringing up with cloud, uh, you have to make sure that you're auditing it right. You're, you're, you're not uh, leaving some low-hanging fruits out there because it just gets easier after that. It does create a lot of worry. Uh, and uh, so when I joined my firm uh, like, uh, some three years ago at that time, I, I, I was joining as the first security engineer there and I just heard this too much that we're on cloud and we're secure and I had to break it down for the entire uh, team that, hey, you have to be worried about that. You have to do cloud audit on a regular basis. The next question they asked was, how do we do it? Uh, we did look at third party audit and uh, the next, uh, I love the open source way of doing things, and that was my pitch. Their pitch was first one. The thing with third party audit is, yes, you're hiring a third party company to do your dirty work. A lot of money is involved. I have a specific problem with the last point. I don't want anyone to have my uh, access of my infrastructure. I, what if they do something wrong, and then I have to get into the legality of all, uh, everything, but at the end, my business stops. My business is at, at risk. Then we pitched into open source. We looked at, uh, we scraped the internet and, and, and found that there were a couple of open source tools which were out there, which were doing a decent job, but we saw that there were too many of them. We saw Scout2 was a prominent one which was doing a good, good job for AWS. Yprawler uh, is another good tool. Lunar, Gscout for G GCP, Azure for Azure. You, we, every now and then our uh, on GitHub, Bitbucket, we did find some local auditing tools as well, and small scripts which were just out there. So we realized that there was a plethora of checks, plethora of uh, tools which are out there, but none of them was doing uh, uh, everything in one place. And with open source setup, uh, open source tool, the one thing you struggle the most is setting them up, raising issues, and then to, uh, figuring out how it will be fixed. And at the end, I think most of us just send a PR. That actually got us to a very different place when we were setting all of these tools up and we realized that this is not something we can, we can set up. Uh, we want to do our audit regularly. We don't want to struggle with open source tools. So we realized we, did, like, we should make a tool, which is Cloud Security Shoot, which has everything in one place, which is easy to set up, and you can just run it on a regular basis. You can have a cron job which just triggers this tool uh, on a regular basis and gives you a report, a centralized report. So the Cloud Security Suite, it takes your open source setup pane away. It compiles all the audit checks in one place. I, there are custom audit checks. When I say custom audit checks, we have scraped a lot of GitHub and Bitbucket using docs, and we have figured out whatever we could find online, we have just added to the tool. And uh, it runs everything in one go. We centralized portable reports. The tool can be run from within your infrastructure, outside your infrastructure it will just work fine and it will have all the reports in one place. You can have a number of AWS accounts uh, like running from the same machine, Azure accounts running from the same machine, GCP accounts running from the same machine. Everything will be in one place. It was very important for us and I believe if we, are, like, we were uh, using uh, it in our firms, I believe a lot of firms are struggling with the similar uh, things and uh, we have got, we've made it in such a way that it's easy to set up and easy to run. Audits the server instance, we'll get to the, like when we get to the demo of it, it will be more clear on the last point. What are the key features of uh, uh, the tool? It does AWS, GCP, Azure audit from one machine. It does server audit in AWS. Uh, when I say server audit, we are looking, we are auditing specific instances as well. We have, this tool has been uh, in continuous development for past two years and 
We try to do a better job every time. We have an improved UI. We, our reports look better now. Earlier, it was just black and white screen. Uh, we have JSON output. Uh, so when we were making the tool, uh, people asked us that you should have a dashboard as well. We gave them JSON output. You can make your own uh, dashboard. Uh, some folks did come to us and asked us that, hey, what are you doing different than AWS Trusted Advisor? So we added the checks which AWS Trusted Advisor also provides you. It comes uh, built in with the uh, tool, and you can just look at, you have everything in one place. That's the whole theme of the tool. We've optimized uh, Prowler. Uh, we have uh, optimized uh, some more AWS custom scripts we, we found. After a while, like an year back, some folks did come to us and said that, hey, uh, we've been running this tool on a regular basis, but we don't know what has changed from the last scan we did. So we now have a diff uh, function as well. We, the tool can be run from a container. Uh, you can run it in a virtualized environment. The code is written in Python and uh, HTML because we show reports in HTML. Uh, that's the most uh, convenient form, uh, like way of reporting we realized was. After one and a half year, we have a logo as well. I have stickers with me uh, in case you guys want it. Running the tool is as simple as this. You clone it right from the clone. You, you seed into it, and you run setup.py. Yes, we are, you have to run setup.py with pseudo permission because there are certain Python libraries we are using which require pseudo permission. After that setup is done, you're good. You're, you're set up for the tool to run either of G AWS, GCP, or Azure, it's all sorted. The next thing you do, if you, if you want to run AWS, you just use the ENV flag, and you give it AWS. And I'll tell you how it scans uh, for AWS. You cannot just go around scanning everything. It has some uh, mechanism of authorization as well. For GCP, the same thing for setup. Uh, GCP has a PID flag, your project ID flag. You have to provide that, and the report looks like this. Uh, this is the version where we have introduced Azure uh, support in CSU. We realized that uh, there was only another one tool, which was Azure, which was uh, doing a decent job with the, the Azure audit. But we have written something from the scratch, and we have tried to add as many checks as possible to audit your infrastructure. Azure, it's the same thing, only the ENV variable changes, and you get a report in the similar format. Now, enough with the slides. Let's go for the demo. So uh, I have CS shoot as a folder here. I'm just going to CD into it. These are the dependencies and the files which are there for you. So uh, when you run uh, setup.py, when you run the file setup.py, what it does is we are at the back end of uh, doing the audit of AWS and uh, Azure and GCP. We are using uh, the CLI versions of, uh, uh, like the AWS CLI we're using and Azure CLI we're using to make calls regularly to your infrastructure and, uh, and see what is right and what is not. So when you run uh, sudo Python setup.py, it will install all the dependencies, everything which is there, and at the end, it will hit a command for AWS, it will hit, hit a command AWS configure. Now, why we, it's hitting that command is it needs to know which infrastructure it is trying to scan. So what, in order to uh, use the tool for AWS, you have to go into your uh, AWS account and you have to generate a set of read-only keys. I'm just looking for configuration. I don't need write permission. You just have to have a set of read-only keys, which is key ID and uh, secret uh, access key. You enter that. For, for, because of the limitation of AWS CLI, you have to put a default region as uh, something, uh, USD East 1, I think, even though the tool does scanning across all the regions, but you have to provide a default region for it to iterate. That's just my hands are tied with AWS CLI there. And output is JSON. These are just pre-filled fields, but uh, once you're done with that, uh, then you're good to go. You're with Python CS to PY, and we're going to do a AWS environment scan. Now, uh, I've ran this tool on a different environment. Uh, I have videos with me, but I like giving demos because they're more fun. Right? I, I know nothing will break. If I hope so, but then I, that's a proof that nothing breaks. So uh, 
the scan will take time depending on the internet connection you have. If you, if, if you have a bigger infrastructure, I would recommend you to put this tool inside a, a box inside your infrastructure. But you can run it from public internet as well, that's fine. So uh, we've got Prowler, we've got Scout2, these were the two decent tools we found out. And uh, they had some, uh, redundant, like some duplicate checks, so what we have done is we have done the labor of removing the duplicate checks. We have taken the deltas or, uh, of everything and we just show unique checks. Rest of the categorization, what you see is, is just nomenclature which we have provided because these were, this, this was the way we were categorizing all the checks. And the, these, this is the way we show the report as well. Now, uh, even though the tool gives you a very neat report at the end, but I'm geeky like that. I want to see what the tool is doing. So it just it's, it's showing you AWS CLI outputs, whatever calls you're making, whatever output is coming on. Uh, the tool works in a multi-threaded fashion, so as and when the, uh, the checks are done, the, the section of the checks are done, you will just see output like that. Don't get worried about like it looks gibberish, but we will get a neat report at the end. Now, uh, as we've added every service we could find, any check we could find it, um, as per CS benchmark, as per our pen testing background, uh, whatever was important to us, we, we added it to the tool. Uh, Let's see where we have reached so far. So as and when uh, the, the sections get done, the classification get done, the reports, we, we show you where the data is sitting so that in case you want to use it. Uh, there's just a couple of checks which take like another 10 seconds, but yeah, at the end we will give you a final report with the location where the report is so that uh, we understand that uh, you might be running it from a machine which doesn't have a UI. So we'll, we'll give you the path of that. And if you have a UI, it will open up a browser instance for you. It's an HTML file. It will just open it up. Yep, so here we, uh, if you look at the terminal, it will give you the location of the file, where it is. And uh, I'll explain you how we are naming the uh, the other folders, uh, it's according to timestamp and a couple of other things so that you, you can uh, differentiate when did you run it and which account did you run it for. Once you run it, uh, you have the AWS report with you. Uh, Scout2, we realized when we were making the tool, we realized a lot of people were already using Scout2 before Cloud Security Suite come into picture, came into picture. So we have not changed anything about Scout2. We've just kept Scout2 the way it is. If you're used to Scout2, uh, you will know where to go and what to look for. But uh, the basic theme of this entire tool will be look for the red ones, you're good with the green ones. Here you see two instances, like for example, your search ports are open to all, you can just look which machine it is. Uh, S3 buckets, you can just look for your buckets, what's, what's wrong there, and uh, fix it. Basic scout to output. Uh, Prowler, uh, whatever we Whatever Scout2 was not covering at that time, we've added it to the Prowler. And uh, again, the theme stays. Look for the red one. Don't worry about the green ones. Uh, we have uh, we've taken from smaller checks to bigger checks. We've added everything, simple things like if you have not changed your password for 90 days, we also show that. It's, it, it's a proper audit. An audit doesn't have, sometimes doesn't have fancy things to look for. All right, I've been told I have 10 minutes, so I'm just going to rush through it. Uh, this section will tell you if, if you have if, this section will tell you if you have a web server running which is only on HTTP, it will tell you that hey, because as a pen tester, that's important for me as a cloud provider. It might not be important for them. If you have an HTTPS server running and it's one, it's running vulnerable ciphers, you will have it here. In the interest of demo, I didn't have a lot of machines in my infrastructure. Then you have data stores, data related to data stores, notification services. What's wrong? What's not? Configs, this was something interesting. When we were writing the tool, when we ran the tool for the first time, we were just adding all the checks we could find, and we realized that we, we found some EC2 instances which were not even attached to an IAM profile. And uh, but my idea of working is I will help, I'll work with the ops team and, and, and design an IAM profile and ask them to attach everything to it, but it wasn't attached to anything. And these were very, very old machines, five years back, but they were just hanging out there. AWS Trusted Advisor, we've just, AWS Trusted Advisor does give you data on optimization as well, but we have taken, we've removed that, we've just taken security checks and showcased it here, just in case you want to compare or you want to look at it, what's there. Uh, it's just test data, so don't worry about it if, if you see gibberish uh, written there, but uh, things like these. But yeah, 
it gives you AWS Trust Advisor data. Diff, uh, it will have everything which is not, uh, uh, which has changed from your last scan, just in case uh, you're running it on a periodic basis. Let me do Azure demo quick. Yeah. Since we have already done the setup, all we have to do is ENV Azure. Now, uh, the authentication for Azure works a bit different. Uh, we've not automated it in a, like, we are on our way to do it, but right now it opens up a browser instance for you, and you have to authenticate whichever account has, uh, uh, has your Azure infrastructure, and you can just click on it, it'll log you in. If you go back to the CLI, you will see that it has got you there, and it's, it's scanning a machine, like, uh, Scanning infrastructure, which is attached to this particular email ID. Uh, you will look at the number that why did it, like why does it start from 2.1? We were looking at CS benchmark documentation, and uh, we just we realized that uh, uh, people might want to know uh, which check I'm looking at. So these are CS benchmark checks with the numbers as well, so that it's easier for you in case you want to search for it and look uh, like uh, look in more detail about that particular check. There is nothing which starts from one dot something because those are uh, for identity and access management in CIS benchmark documentation for Azure. Also, you would see that there is uh, no calls or no checks you can make via Azure CLI, and this is an automated tool, so our hands are a little tight there. Uh, for, like, if you look at the CIS benchmark documentation, it'll just tell you, go here, like, log in, go here, go here, and check whether this button is on or not, and that's how they do it. As and when Azure CLI will bring in more uh, capabilities, we will keep adding more checks to it. And it's just two of us working on it, so in case we have missed out anything, please feel free to raise an issue, and we will add it to the tool. And if you want to contribute, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, for Azure, yeah, we also check for things like you have a contact number set for uh, your Azure account or not, your, uh, your contact email is there or not, because if a security incident happens, uh, how is Azure going to reach out to you? Uh, I have limited time, so I'm going to just jump straight to the uh, report. So, uh, I'll just let's wait it out. I'll give it 20 more seconds. Of, that's still 8.2. Uh, OS disencryption is something uh, uh, like virtual agent. Virtual agent is uh, something which Azure gives you as a feature that you should have it enabled, and then Azure can parallelly check for some security things uh, uh, at, at the back end. Uh, so that was something interesting, uh, which everyone should have it on just in case. You don't even have to run the tool, just get virtual agents on. Once the scan is done, you will see the uh, location of the report and uh, different sections of the report. You can just uh, look up, look for the red ones, don't worry about the green ones. That's, that's the whole thing. Uh, logging and monitoring, we have checks around that. Networking, Network Watcher is another feature by uh, uh, Azure. Should have it on, enabled. Your virtual machines, whether your disk are encrypted or not, uh, your VM agent is enabled or not. Your Azure Vault, whether your keys, uh, your vault keys are set with an expiry date or not. Your databases and the old diff. Now, let me quickly move ahead to the other part of my presentation. So I'm, I'm going to skip GCP. Uh, in, uh, the output comes in JSON format in case you want to pipe it to a dashboard. Uh, like the, uh, at the end, I've, I've shown the location of the JSON if you want to use it for a dashboard. The main key uh, values you want to look at is the type, which, will, which can be warning or OK. That's how we decide green or red, and the value. Well, you will have more details about that particular check. Now, with Azure and uh, AWS so far, what we saw is that we have scanned the entire infrastructure. We are looking at what configuration is right or not. Uh, and with AWS, uh, like we are heavily on AWS, and I want to use, uh, uh, like I want to, uh, I have certain important machines sitting in my infrastructure, and I want to do an audit of, the, an OS audit of those machines as well. So we added that feature to the uh, tool. Uh, because I have your AWS keys, uh, all you have to give me is the IP, and I'll figure out whether it's a Linux machine, it's a Windows machine or not, and I'll, I'll give you an audit report for the same. Uh, it runs audit on remote machine, reports copied back to the main machine, portable HTML report, and uh, 
The tool also works with uh, your private IP addresses. Uh, if your default AWS region is set to that particular IP address, otherwise it will not know where to look for that machine. Let me show you a quick demo for that. So, so here, uh, okay, before we go here, Python cs.py hyphen h will give you all the flags which the tool supports in case uh, uh, you want to, you can just read about it and I'll, ch I'll use some of them in the demo as well. So here I'm using, uh, I'm, I'm using the environment as AWS. I've, I've given a private IP and I'm using my PEM file for authentication. In order to audit this, you have to, uh, like the machine from which you're running should have SSH access to the remote box you're trying to scan. Uh, because I have the AWS keys, I can figure out whether it's a Linux box or a Windows box. If it's a Linux box, the tool comes bundled in with a copy of Linus. Linus is a good Linux auditing tool. And it'll, it'll, it'll SCP the, the Linus uh, file into that remote box. It'll run the scan there. It'll, it'll bring back the report, clean the report from that box because you don't want reports sitting in a, in a non-security box. It's just a normal functionality box. And uh, it'll, uh, it'll show you the report for that. Since it's all dependent on the, uh, the speed of internet you have, so again, if you want to get things done faster, you want to make it sit in the, inside the infrastructure and have a good bandwidth for that machine. Linus, we have not changed anything with the output. Of, I think it should be done in a while. I'll be done in two, two three minutes. Give me that. <laughs> huh. Come on, demos work. Yeah, so Linus Audit is done. Again, I'm struggling with a, a, a bit with bandwidth. So this data is, again, like a simple Linus output. We've not made any changes to Linus. Theme stays the same. Don't worry about the green ones. Look for the other color. Uh, this will give you an OS audit of your Linux machine, uh, what's going right and what's, what's not. Uh, let's look at a demo of... Uh, a different machine. This time we're, we're going to use different flags. Environment is AWS. Environment is AWS. Uh, the IP I'm using this time is a public IP. I'm using a username as Shivankar. So previously, if you've realized, we didn't give a username. So if you don't give a username to the tool, it takes EC2 user as the default user, which is, which is the default user for AWS as well. And if you give a username, uh, it, it will try to do SSH, uh, like via that uh, username. So this time it has figured out a Windows box. For Windows box, we have written a power, uh, we have taken a, power, uh, a PowerShell script uh, by Alan Renoff. It was a, it's a really good workstation script. He has put it on GitHub. We have, uh, the tool again comes bundled, win, bundled in with it, and uh, it'll run the scan. For you, this takes a bit of time, but the report you get for uh, Windows is way more extensive, and I like that. I personally like that report. And this is the last part of my demo, so I'm almost done. Or I can just show you the report directly from my system. Ah, it's done. I'm back. So this is what the report looks like. You have general information about your system. You have hot fixes. What are there on those machine on that machine or not? Your local disk configuration. NIC configuration is something nice. I would like to know which which network cards are attached to my uh, machine because we are running these on important machines, the machines which are going to be there. But I have to make sure the audit is done. Software is uh, local shares. Services which are running, this is something which, which is neat, that you have all the, uh, the, the services which are running with what privileges. And that's it. Let me go back to slide. These are the references we have. Uh, so then we have done the parameter scan of the entire infrastructure. We are, we are taking care of single, uh, uh, single machines as well for their OS uh, audit. And, uh, this is my information. In case you want to contribute to the tool, we'll, we'll, 
welcome you with open arms. Uh, you have issues, raise to it. You can follow us on Twitter. My first one is CSU, next is mine. And let me know if you still need stickers. <laughs> All right. Thank you.